just like to hand you to Colin, my best man. Yeah. Please, please be gentle, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the best man going, as Tony's already said. Let me just first say that the bridesmaid look absolutely beautiful today. Yep. And only, <laughs> and only right, out, rightly outshone by our gorgeous bride, Rachel. Before I start, before I start, just let me say that the formative, formative years that I spent in Tony's company have played a big part in developing my personality and my sense of humour. So well, I've tried to make my speech as funny as possible. You've got him to blame if it's not. <laughs> I've known Tony for many years now, and uh, you could say I could have been a bit of a father figure to him. I've watched him drink from a bottle. I've watched him stagger around naked. I've watched him crawl. I've dressed and undressed him, and even cleaned up, cleaned up after him. And that was just a stagnate. <laughs> Me and Tony first met during our first year in Straven Academy. We were in the same registration class but we didn't really become friends in the third year, so. And uh, I played a massive part in preparing Tony for some of the problems about, sorry, I'm jumping to the wrong bit. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> I, I feel I played a massive part in preparing him for some of the problems he might overcome and he's uh, or come, come to in his married life. And the one that jumps out the most is impotency. <laughs> A few years ago, at a party, uh, just after some exams, myself and a few of the boys at that table sitting over there, uh, spiked Tony's can of beer with a cup of Viagra. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Tony at the time wasn't aware of this, and he secretly confided in me that he was really worried. He thought his penis was broken, because he'd, <laughs> he'd had an erection for around about three hours. And I remember telling him, don't worry Tony, it's absolutely natural. Try and hide it as best you can and get on your, get on your night the best you can. But, uh, so he did. It's a good night. <laughs> Bit of a boner. But Mick and Christine, can I just say, I've consulted a doctor and he's told me that Tony's Viagra taking won't have had anything to do with his recent need for a circumcision in recent years. <laughs> Nor will it have any, anything to do. <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> Not only anything to do with uh, his ability to provide you with grandkids. And if, it, if it does, then Robin Stewart on it. <laughs> Obviously, you all know now from earlier on during the ceremony how, how Tony and Rachel met. And uh, it was at school. And I think they were about 16 year old or something like that. It was after, just a, an after exams party at, uh, at the same location, unfortunately, as they'll described by Aggregate incident. And as with every, every story, for two sides. Tony's side tells a typical romantic story of how they met at this party, got talking, hit it off and fell deeply in love. However, recently, our beautiful maid of honour, Natalie, has told me that Rachel's side tells a completely different tale. <laughs> Rachel's recollections of events are that Tony got her drunk, used a few cheesy chat lines and tried to take her bra off. <laughs> If you please note the word tried there, I really hope it's from practicing for the, to the wedding night. But um, as I said, me and Tony met at school. We became friends in the third year, but our relationship really didn't blossom until I managed to land him a job working beside me in the Stephen Leisure Centre as a lifeguard. And uh, it was, I'm going to tell you a story that Tony's made me keep secret now for about seven years or so. I've not told him this before in my life, but uh, I'm going to share it with you today since it's wedding day. So I'm just going to set, I'll set the scene for you a bit. We were both about 16, we had just finished the exams and we were spending our time working in the pool and going out at night with our mates, usually to Robbie Brogan's mum's house for a couple of babies. And uh, one day we were working together on shift, we were sitting in the staff room, flicking through a paper, just skiving as we usually did, and we came across this ad that said male models, male, male models wanted. So the two of us looked at each other and we thought, bugger it, that's us. <laughs> so, Tony dialed the number, put it on a loudspeaker, and the two of us are speaking on this phone, and all of a sudden this woman answers with a really husky voice, really masculine, and she starts asking us questions like, what height are you? What weight are you? 
what do you look like, what colours your hair, what colour your eyes? So we answered her, told her all our questions, and then she came round and said, I'm really sorry boys, but I don't think you're good looking enough for, for catalogue work. But I've got a new magazine that requires nude models. So we both looked at each other and thought, right, we're not doing this. We hung up the phone, but obviously by this time we'd given her our phone numbers, our names and addresses. And a couple of days later, we get invitations through for additions. So we both agreed. I phoned him said, look, did you get this, this letter through the door? And he says, aye. And I said, look, we're not going to go. We agreed we wouldn't go. So the day of additions comes, I went round to Tony's. He thought he'd go for a couple of beers. No answer at the door. I tried his phone. It was off all day long. I thought nothing of it at the time. I just thought he's maybe out doing something with some, somebody else. So I left it. And then three weeks later, I walked into local news agents and my jaw felt with the floor. <laughs> and ladies and gents, if you open your envelopes, I've placed on your tables now. <laughs> You'll see the shocking secret that I've held for seven years. <laughs> Tony, all I can say is I hope you're well paid, mate. On a sincere note, I'd like to thank Tony. You've been an excellent friend for me over the years. You've helped me through many problems. And you're genuinely the most caring and generous person I know. You deserve a lifetime of happiness, and I'm sure you and Rachel will find that together. There are no two people in my life that I've ever met that are more suited for each other than you two. You genuinely were born to be together. I just want to say it's been an honour to be your best man today. I'm really happy to be part of your wedding day. Before I finish, I'd like to ask Tony and Rachel to participate in my speech. Rachel, if I could ask you to put your hand flat on the table. Tony, if you could put your hand directly on top of Rachel's. Rachel, your other hand on top of Tony's. Tony's just on top of hers. You enjoying that, mate? It's the last time you have an upper hand. <laughs> Tony, I genuinely feel richer for people to call you a friend. And I'm so glad you found such a wonderful woman to share life with. So here's to you and Rachel and many years of love, laughter, happiness, success and joy. On that note, I'd like to, like to ask you all to join me in a toast to the bride and groom, Mr and Mrs Anthony Butler. Funny, eh? Who's Bodell? I'm not sure, I found it in Google. <laughs>